last names and things. So today we're going to make an art journal. So I have to give credit to um, Jenna Belly because um, I make my art journals using the techniques that she shows you in the, in one of her videos. I'll put a link below. Um, I do do a couple things different, but I definitely want to give her credit. So you should totally check her out. She has a lot of great videos. She's a great mixed media artist, but I like to include journals in my art journal kits and junk journal kits. Um, I just love making journals, so this is a great way for me to, to make them, but I make them out of cereal boxes, and like this is a fruit snack box for my nephew, I have like a peanut brittle box, and just all sorts of a mocha box, and I usually try to make them the size of a cereal box, or um, like a snack size box, those are pretty good um, width and length for, or sides for a art journal. So, um, all you do is you take them apart. So, I don't know if you know this, but on Mox boxes, it's put together like this, right? Um, there's just, there's usually a little flap that glues everything together. And I actually use the flaps when I make my journals just to reinforce the cover. So, you have, I mean, on the important parts, you have a lot of, it's really sturdy. Yeah. Yeah. Just the reinforcement of the cardboard. Okay. So, Let's get started. So I'm going to make a whole bunch of them. I just make a bunch at one time, um, and I'm going to take you through the process. Um, so I'm going to show you all the steps, okay? So let me grab a few things here. So um, you can use double-sided sticky tape um, to secure um, the, the flaps of your box. I don't happen to have any right now, so I'm just going to use um, just Eileen's tacky glue. So that's what we're going to do first. I'm sorry, I'm just talking up a storm, but what we're going to do first is we're going to secure these so that'll give us the base of our journal, okay? So I'm just going to take some tacky glue and I just pour it out. This is This project does take a lot of glue, so just kind of prepare yourself. And it's messy which I love. So you're just going to glue down your tab. So what I suggest you do first is this right here is a floppy. We are going to glue that one down first. Now if you didn't, if you wanted to cut those off, you could. But it just helps to have as much reinforcement in your journal as you possibly can. Okay, so you're just going to do that. Just like that. So I'll do that on so now I'll secure the middle part, and this is going to be our spine. Okay, so that's going to be our spine okay, for our journal. As I said, I'm going to take you through all the techniques, and I'm going to explain very, very well. I think sometimes, I know, I just like having every step explained. So hopefully you guys do too. So I'm just going to take that and I'm going to brush on the tacky glue just like that. Okay. And I'm going to press down and apply lots of pressure. Okay. Now, if it bothers you to keep having to press down on stuff, you could just put a little bit of hot glue just to secure it a little bit um, until you can put it right on top of the wet glue just to until you get everything tacked down until, okay, but I don't mind, you just keep pressing. I do have some paper clips here and I'll show you how I'm gonna use those in a second. Um, just to kind of keep everything down and please be very liberal with the glue. You want this to stay together, okay. And like I said, double-sided sticky tape is probably the best way to do this. I just happen not to have any, like I said. So at this point, we'll just take our paper clips. These are jumbo size, but you can use small ones or even binder clips will work, whatever you have. And we're gonna stick that down, okay? And I can kind of press these a little bit if I need to. Okay, and it doesn't take very long for, for it to adhere, for it to cooperate with us, okay? So we're just gonna do the exact same thing, so I'll do the bottoms first. But I love making art journals, so I'm just going to make a batch of them. 
and then hopefully I'll get lots of orders and okay you know what I don't want to put that one down yet because I want this little one to be reinforced for so I'm just going to take my glue and stick it down and I'll put some more glue right on top of that and we'll secure it down like that okay let's move it out a bit okay and I'm just constantly always pressing back on these okay I can't find all my paper clips which is strange but normally I load these up with paper clips okay so you're just gonna take it oops and it looks like my book became undone so no worries we'll just add some more glue so the size that I like to make is the one with cereal boxes I just like working with a big journal but so, I mean, but you can use basically anything to make a journal. It doesn't necessarily have to be like if this is not if this is too much of a process for you, then absolutely use a composition book. And I'm actually going to have a video on how to alter one to make a smash book slash art journal <laughs> slash uh, smash book slash junk journal. Okay, take that, okay, and we're just going to press everything down here, okay, just like that, okay, now we're going to leave this to dry, okay, so I'll just check around, I'll put more um, pins around so it doesn't come up the way that it is there, you can see how that's coming up a little bit, we want, don't want that to happen, we want to make sure that everything is going to be secure and down, okay, just like that. Okay, so now for the outside, and this is the cereal box. We're going to be working on a Lucky Charms box, <laughs> which is kind of cool. So this is going to be the journal that I'm making um, to give to my client. Okay, all okay. right. So I let it dry for a while. So what you're going to do is you're going to grab your newspaper or you can use um, crepe paper. I do like to use newspaper just because I like word showing in my journals. So all you do is you take it and you crumple it up in a ball. So you just take it just like this and very gently you crumple it up just because I want some texture and I want to create like waves and wrinkles and all sorts of stuff. Okay. So wait, wait. All right, so as you can see, I have some leverage here on on all my sides. All righty, so that looks pretty good. I'm just kind of eyeing it out. Now, if you didn't have newspaper, you could also use like crepe paper or kind of, or whatever kind of you can use art paper, which is what I'm working on here. Um, whatever you have that'll work it doesn't matter it just needs to be a big piece of paper and this is just going to reinforce so it makes it a little bit more rigid okay Absolutely. so so we will get started so what I'm going to do is I'm going to first load this paper with glue okay with my tacky glue okay it down okay so I have some on this lid I'm gonna take this lid off and I'm gonna kind of be gentle with this but it's okay you know if it breaks a little bit but this might be actually this is quite thick this glue of mine so I think I'm going to switch to just some Elmer's glue all just to get things going a little quicker so alrighty so this is just glue all it's not glue goo because I don't want it to be waterproof 
Hopefully this will come out. Okay, there we go. That should be better, I hope. But we're just going to load it down. Load the corners, load everywhere with tons of glue. Okay. And I don't mind if the newspaper has a little bit of color in it because I can cover it up with my acrylic paint. Okay. Because we're going to paint this. Okay. Ready? So I'm just going to take it and very gently. I'm just going to brush in my glue just to make sure that every little piece has glue on it. Okay. And then I'm also going to brush that cardboard with it too. I just really want this to last for a while, I want to make sure that it's secured very, very well. So take your time and do this, okay? It takes glue a little while to dry, so you can take your time. And don't worry about cutting it to size. I'll show you how we're going to get beautiful edges for our book. a little bit. I don't want that paper to stick in any way at all. But how cool would it be if you have like a Chinese um, community or an Asian community? I'm sure they have Asian papers or papers that have that are in Chinese or if you have a French neighborhood or something like that that does or German. I mean you could the sky's the limit. Alrighty, so I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm just going to get this edge very, very well. Okay. those edges very very well okay all right so I think we're good that looks very good to me Ready? okay so the paper here just like that okay and I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna set it right on top okay and then I can take off my paper clips, like so. Or you should probably do that before. <laughs> before you put down your page, I should have thought of that. Okay. Alrighty, so I'm just going to take those off. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some extra glue right in here. And along my seams, okay, just to reinforce, okay, okay, and then I'm going to take my corners, okay, so this edge right here, and I'm just going to bring it in, okay, and I'm going to smooth it down, okay, just like that. And same thing here, I'm going to take this corner and I'm going to bring it down just like that. And same thing over here. I'm going to take that one and I'm going to bring it down just like that. And don't worry if it's not completely covered by the paper, we're going to do something cool for that too. Okay. And then I'm going to do this other corner here just like that. Okay. And before I fold this down completely, 
I'm going to kind of maneuver this and I just want to show you see how much texture that has you want the wrinkles and the folds okay all right so we can take our glue again okay. and we can just go around just to make sure that this is going to stick very very well Well, this bottle top is getting on my nerves. <laughs> it's driving me a little crazy right now. It's just not cooperating, so we're actually going to just take some out. Okay, just like that. And we're going to go around these edges. Just like that. Okay. Ready? So I'm going to take this and I'm going to fold it over. Just like that. Okay. And then I can just smooth it out. Just like that. But see how that makes a nice smooth finish? Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Just really going to make sure that I have a lot of glue going on here. Okay. So we're going to take that and we're going to bring it over just like that. And we're going to smooth it out. Okay. is so thick but maybe it's I don't know maybe I just got a bad batch normally it, I mean I know it's thick but it's not that thick where it doesn't run usually okay so you've been at so it just creates a beautiful edge plus it looks so pretty when you go over it okay with the paint okay so we're gonna take that and we're gonna fold that over as well okay Ready? Now I am going to let this dry for a while, okay? Just because I want all my glue dry and everything, okay? Okay, just like that. But I just want to show you. And then here I'm really going to turn this around and I'm going to press, make sure that I press that paper in very, very well, okay? And that's going to create wrinkles and dents and everything in there, which is what we want. Okay. We just want to create lots of texture. And like I said, I love using newspaper because then the words show through, which I think is a beautiful effect. Okay. All right. So I've smoothed all that out. Now, if you wanted to, you could do a couple coats of newspaper, um, but I think one's good. That's what I always do. I works out fine so alrighty so now for this inside cover we I'm trying to think I think maybe I'll let this dry and we'll paint first and then I'll show you how we're going to do this inside and this process too is going to reinforce this cover so that it's nice and hard and rigid okay so I can kind of go around here just make sure that all that newspaper is down very very well okay you know what I've done it before I think that's what we're gonna do so this part we're gonna switch a little bit so um, I'm just gonna take out a plastic mat here that I have just to make sure that this doesn't stick um, as we do it okay alrighty so what I'm going to do is I want to decorate this part and I love to collage so that's what we're gonna do okay so and for that I use Mod Podge just because I think it has a beautiful effect so we're gonna grab some Mod Podge and I just have a bag full of scraps here so I'm gonna use all my scraps I'm going to cut some, I'm going to tear some, I'm just going to kind of go crazy and use all these scraps that I've been saving up. Okay. okay. So, 
we're going to do is we'll just, like, that's one that I made that I marbled, okay? Okay, so I can just make cuts, okay, just to cover up this back panel. So I want lots of different papers. I have these. These are altered pages from, from a National Geographic book. I also have a video on that too if you want to see it. So all I'm going to do is cut those into squares. If you wanted to, you could tear. There's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with that. But I just love the effect they give. I mean, you can't find paper like that. It's really cool. The best thing is, it didn't cost that much to make. Okay. Then this is some more paper that I make with water cutters and crowns. Very pretty. It gives a really pretty effect. And I also make this for my art journal kits too. So, but I just love the effect that it gives. Okay. Just like that. So we'll definitely include some of that. And then I just have some scrapbooking paper. I'm definitely going to include that. Cut some small. Don't leave them all large. Just all your little scraps. Just use them all up. Okay, just like that. Okay, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to work. Um, I'm making these scraps just like that. But um, this person wanted a blue one, so I'm going to make sure that I use a lot of blue, which is my mom's favorite color, too. Like this one has a bunch of sprays and inks and all sorts of stuff, so I'll definitely do that. And it has a lot of texture too because I wrinkled it before so we're definitely going to use some of that. It's all wrinkly and pretty and everything so we'll use some of that. And that's another marble page that I did that came out even more awesome than the other one so I'm going to definitely do that. And there's some blue in there, so we'll do some blue for sure. Okay. Ready? So let's get to the, our book pages. So I should have some more in my little book here. Hmm. We can use some of that. I have some book pages here, which I love to include in my collages, so we'll get those. It's like a fairy tale book from a long time ago. It has some really strange fairy tales in it. I must say, it's not your Cinderella kind of book. <laughs> it's kind of disturbing. Like It had like pictures of demons and all this crazy stuff. I was like, okay, well, you know, weird, but... Maybe people were reading about demons, you know, back in the day <laughs> in their fairy tales. I don't know. It was weird. Okay, so you can even do pictures, but it has the ugly. Oh, it does have the ugly duckling. So I didn't see that one. I really didn't look through it that well. Okay. But it does have some pretty cool pictures, minus the demons. Let's see. does take time but it's just a labor of love and it's such just a wonderful thing and it's so fun to know that you made your own journal with your own hands you know because you can go out and buy something and I've done that before but there's just something very special about sitting here taking the time to make your own journal and for me to know that someone's going to take this and make something just beautiful with it that makes me really really happy okay Alrighty, so. Okay, so we'll take half of those and 
And I'm just going to cut those babies in half, just like that. Okay, so um, this seems like enough right now to, um, to do what we're going to do next, okay? All right, so for this part, I'm going to use my Mod Podge. So I'm just going to move those scraps over. Okay, and I bought a new bottle of Mod Podge. The other one was getting, like, all this strange stuff in it, so it was not cooperating with me at all. So I said, Shmi, I think it's time for you to get another bottle since you've had that one for, like, years. <laughs> I'm, like, so stingy with my Mod Podge, so. Okay, and actually... I need a different brush here, but we're just going to brush this on with that brush, and I'm going to get another one. Okay, so I should have a thick brush. Okay. So this is the baby that I'm going to use. Okay. And just make sure you have you get one that has good bristles, like the ones from the dollar store. Believe me, I've tried to use them. It didn't work out so well. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to brush them on in a little area, okay? I'm not going to like do the whole thing, okay? And I'm going to put a piece down, just like that, and very quickly, I'm going to go over it, okay? Now, if you wanted to, you could take a credit card just to make sure that it stays down very, very well. And then for this part, since this is going to be our spine, um, be very cognizant, like don't put pieces of paper right on the edge there. Make sure that it's over, okay? Otherwise you'll have a big problem. <laughs> It'll start to come up and that's a little bit annoying, so try not to do that. just go right over it. And if you wanted to, you could take a credit card just to smooth it out to make sure that it won't come up at all. All I'm going to do is just pour some in there so that I don't leave this open so it doesn't dry out and get all icky. Okay. I'm just going to take that and I'm going to screw the top back on. Okay. And um, this is gloss. That's what I like to use. Um, you can absolutely use matte and that would be awesome or glitter or whatever kind you want. So I'm just going to continue to decoupage this on. You're cont I'm going to make sure that you can be able to see me do every single step, but I don't think you want to sit here with me, <laughs> me talk for 30 minutes doing this. So I'm going to just continue on. I'll see you back for the next step. Okay guys, so I'm back. So the back part has dried almost fully. So that's the way it looks. It really turned out very beautifully. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, so now we're going to paint the cover, which looks like that. So that's our cover. Ready? So I'm going to select my paints. I do have a little bit of Mod Podge left over, but I'm going to add some paint to that. So I have a blue color here that I like. This is Tube blue. That's what it's called. Tube blue. And I also have a little bit of white because I'm going to dull it down just a little bit. It might take a couple of coats. We'll see. But like I said, I really love the letters to, to show up. So, um, so we'll just kind of see. This is a rather dark um, white. I mean, blue. So 
I'm going to kind of see how it goes. Okay. So I just added just a little bit of white in there. Actually, a lot of white in there to lighten it up really well. And I'm just going to give this a stir. And I did allow that to dry for a while. I did do, um, and it was perfect. Okay, so now we're going to begin to make our strokes. Okay. So we'll just kind of paint this on. Actually, this has really good coverage right now, so I might have to scrape off a little bit to get it to. But I am going to go over the pictures where there's a lot of color. That's probably where we might have a coverage issue. Now, if you wanted to, you could absolutely gesso this before. I did wait for this to fully dry, too, just to be sure. But um, the acrylic paint makes a really good coating on top of the paint. And I'm working on a, just on a piece of scrap paper, because, so I don't care if paint gets on there or whatever, it's okay. And I also have a craft mat underneath, and that's just to protect uh, my Mod Podge or Deco Podge part. Okay. The good thing about acrylic paint is that it dries super duper quick. I'm gonna have a seat, I think. <laughs> okay. There we go. And as you can see, there's a few bubbles right on the spine, but once it's fully dry, it should be fine. I don't really mind if that happens. Um, the paper is sealed and it was covered with a lot of glue. I think that that's part of the charm of it, actually. It makes it look old and aged and all wrinkly and pretty, I think. So, I'm not getting a lot of text showing, okay? So I'm going to see if I can bring some up, because I know that I had some in that area. Okay. But it's okay if there's not a lot showing. I just love spending a day making these. It's so wonderful. And they're all handmade by me. All these kits are. So I select paper and paint washi tapes, which I should have a video on that, which is rather easy. Alrighty. There we go. And I can kind of see like where I need to go in a little bit. To see pictures and stuff. I see a little bit of text right there, so that's perfect. I see a line here that I want to cover up, so I'm just going to take that and cover that up. Just like that. Alrighty, and actually you can see some of the text showing out, which I love. I really love text and texture. Okay. Alrighty. And as I said, the acrylic paint dries super quick, so you don't have to worry about that. Just seeing if I see any pictures or anything that isn't covered, that isn't text, that will be kind of strange. 
for someone to look at. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Maybe right up in here we'll go. I'm just going to go around the edges a little bit. So that's what we have so far. And as you can see, there's a lot of texture in it. It's all crinkly and beautiful, and it looks aged. See? And I really love that look. Like when, if you draw a picture of a girl on here, or if you write around the edge, it looks so awesome which is what I love to do for my art journals. So, see, so I'm just going to see, and you probably can't see, but you can see some of the text, especially right in this area, really coming through. Coming through. Okay, so... Alrighty. Okay, so I'm just going to go around the edges as much as I can, just with my paintbrush. Because I have a little bit of paint left in here that I don't want to waste, and I'm just going to go around those edges. You can probably really see it up there, just to add a little bit of color. Around the back, too. And this is mixed with Mod Podge, so it should have kind of a glossy finish. It won't be matte, um, which is your preference, too. You can make it glossy or matte if you'd like. Okay. Alrighty, let's see. So I'm just checking around the edges, seeing if there's any spots that need water, that need something. And I don't even mind if a little bit of paint gets on my, um, on my collage. So don't worry about that. Okay. Alrighty. So that's kind of the way that it looks, which I love. So um, I don't think that I'm going to do another coat, but I'll show you if I do. How does that sound? And then um, we will get started on the next part, which will be, um, I'm going to actually stand this up just like that, um, which will be making our closure, okay? And um, also how I add my signatures in. I really like... Um, journals that expand so you can put lots of pages in them rather than um, than one. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to make a journal um, where that expands that you can make as big as you want with as many sides pages as you want kind of um, which will be awesome. So I will see you in the next video. If I do another coat I will show it to you but it looks pretty good to me. I really love the texture and and everything. I think it looks beautiful. I will show you um, on here, if I turn it over, I don't know if you can tell, but there's a little bit of newspaper showing on the edges. So what I will do is um, when this is dry, I will go around the edges and um, paint around that, like right up in there in the top. Okay. Alrighty. So, um, I will see you in a little bit. And it looks like I did get a little bit of paint inside, but that's okay. I'm just going to kind of rub it in a little bit. It's no biggie. Kind of gives it a little bit more character even. Okay. Hi guys, it's me from Crafts Names and Things. So I just wanted to show you, um, I completed my journal here. So this is what it looks like. 
the one that I'm sending to a client and it's all decoupage in the inside and I just um, ran some paint right on the edges just to kind of finish it up a little bit and it's pretty darn hard it has a lot of texture I don't know if you can see in there but you can actually see um, some of the words coming through and I just love it I think it's really pretty and I'm not going to treat it but if you wanted to you could definitely like put a coat of Mod Podge or kind of whatever you wanted um, on top of it um, just to just to make sure that um, that it lasts a little longer but I sell that I give my client them like this way so that that way they can draw on the cover and embellish it the way that they would like so now we are going to make the closure now as far as the binding um, I leave that up to my clients too so what you get is you just get a whole bunch of stuff vintage pages watercolor paper just tons of stuff hand painted pages that I made myself altered pages just all sorts of stuff and um, I put that all in a kit and um, and then I just include some suggestions for how to bind your pages into your book my favorite way actually is just to take yarn and tie the signatures in and it just creates a beautiful spine on the edge so um, that's which way I like to do it but I like to people to be able to open to find it the way that they want and I have a video you know showing them how they can do the different bindings another great way to do it too is just with render bands which is awesome too but sorry let's get back to what we're doing here so what you're going to do is you're going to just cut a piece of yarn so this is just a piece of yarn okay and I just have a pokey tool here and I have just a selection of beads. Um, these are beads that I made in another video. I really like them. I think they'll be perfect for this. They're very pretty. Um, so those are what I'm typically gonna, what I am going to use. So I'm just gonna kind of eyeball. So I think that this side will be my cover. Okay. Actually, maybe I'll make, I'm trying to decide here. I think I'll make this one the cover. So we'll make this in the cover, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my pokey tool and I'm gonna go in hmm, about an inch out, okay? And I'm gonna make my first hole, okay? Okay, and I'm gonna poke it right through, okay? And then I'm gonna make a hole maybe about a half of an inch or just like the length of your your thumb okay on the other end okay and I'm gonna try to get it as close to that hole as I am I'm gonna try to line it up okay so there's that hole there okay and I'm gonna just try to line it up okay and this is quite hard um, because of the procedure that we did Okay, so then I cannot find needles to save my life right now. So I just tuck a piece of wire, just like I showed you in another video of how you can kind of make your own needle thing. Okay, and this is just, this might be too thick. I might need some thinner wire. Okay, but we'll see. We'll see if we can't get it to work. Okay, alrighty, just like that. All right. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to thread on a bead or two. Okay, so one and two. Okay, kind of want to keep that on. Make sure you keep that wire on. Okay, okay, and I'm going to keep those kind of close. Okay, and then I'm going to go on the furthest one from the spine. So this is the first hole that I'm going into. Okay, which is furthest from. Um, which is furthest from the end, okay? So that's the hole that I'm doing first. And actually, you know what I should do is I should go in. That would probably be best, okay. Okay, and I'm just gonna kind of try to maneuver here. So if I go in this way, okay, then I can just pull the beads in. Okay, I think we got it, by golly. Okay, so we'll go in the hole this might take some shuffling actually I want those as close together as I possibly can okay 
है Alrighty, you just have to pull it a little bit, apply some pressure. Okay. Okay, so that's the way that the beads are going to sit, okay? Just to let you know. Okay, so on this end, we can, we can tie it off, okay? So I'm just going to take this. And I'm going to make a couple knots, okay, just to kind of protect. So I go like that. And like that. Tighten it up. And then bring it together. And that should be enough, I think, to hold it. This is rather thin. So we want to make sure that it's going to stay. And I like, I'm going to apply a little bit of glue there just to make sure that it stays. Okay. And then I'm just going to take this. This is the other end of my yarn of this really long piece. And I'm sorry, it's about maybe two feet. And I'll show you why in a second. Okay. So then I'm just going to, again, take my DIY needle. Okay. And I'm going to bring this through that hole. You might have to jiggle it a little bit. Just be patient. It'll come through, I promise. Okay. Just like that. Okay. Alrighty. Okay. 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 Alrighty. So. Then what we're going to do is we're going to thread it back into, so we have our long piece here. This is the other end. Actually going to thread it through this one that has the knot in it. Okay. We're going to thread it back through. Okay. And what this does is it's just going to protect it. Okay. So sorry, you can't see what I'm doing if I don't lower it for you. Okay, so I'm just threading it through the other way, and this would be much easier with a needle, which I wish that I had, but I do not. Okay, so I'm going to take it, and be careful, because sometimes it can get twisted with the other yarn. Okay, and if that just happens, just take your time. All right, and we're going to thread it through, okay, just like that. Okay. Alrighty, we're going to pull that pretty darn tight. Okay, then on this end, we're going to thread some beads on there. So I'm going to just do three. I might do more. We'll see. Okay. And I have just some purples and some pretty ones. Okay, so I'm going to do three, which I think will go very well. And then I'm going to do a few small ones too. Um, just because I'm going to do blue. Since her theme is kind of blue, I'm going to try to stick with blue. I always like combining blue and purple, though. <laughs> okay. And even the yarn is blue, too. Okay. All right. So I'm going to bring it all the way to the end. Okay. As much as I can. Okay. And I'm going to take this. And I'm going to tie I'm going to make another knot, just like I did before. But this time, we're going to tie it three times okay and that's kind of why you want those smaller beads too is because you would have to do a lot of knotting <laughs> to keep those big ones from falling through and if you want to learn how to make those I will definitely post it underneath so you can see okay so that makes a pretty good size knot it doesn't look like oh yeah not big enough though so I'm going to keep on tying Okay, because it's not big enough and I do not want those beads to come through. Okay, so we're just going to, we can kind of direct our knot where it should go. Just like that. And this part takes patience, so just be patient with yourself. It will come together, I promise. Okay, and then I put a little bit of glue on this knot too, which I will show you because... I hate when people tell me that they do stuff and they don't show me, and I'm like, well, what if I do it wrong and that's not the way that it's supposed to go? So, okay. Alrighty. So 
I just have some screw glue here and just right on the very edge or white glue or tacky glue kind of whatever you want it's just going to harden it up a little bit and make sure that that knot stays but look All right. okay and then what I also like to do too is um, I'm going to actually tie a knot just to kind of keep these in place a little bit okay so I just take that tie it around bring it through Okay, and we'll do one more. Doing our best to get it in the same place, okay? Sometimes it's a little tricky, but with knots, you just take your time and you can guide them basically where you want them to be, okay? So just take your time and guide it, okay? And I need to come down a little bit more, okay? And I really like this yarn. It's nice and textured, okay? So then if you want to close your book, which I love this kind of closure, it's very beautiful, is you just wrap it around just like this three or four times, okay? And then I can just take this part and I can just bring it through. Through those, or you could even fit it in there too. So let me just show you here. Sorry, I went about that a little wrong. <laughs> there we go. Okay, and then you can kind of bring your beads up, and it just creates a beautiful closure. Okay, so see how pretty that is? And then I can trim off the edges. Okay, and it just creates a really pretty effect. Okay, which I love. Okay, just like that very natural and beautiful and it's really easy so all you do is just thread them back through just like that and then you can undo it and you can open your book and I will put a link to um to how I okay and I'm just going to trim that off too and then I'll take some more glue and I'll put a link to the ways that I um, bind my books to so you can see and I'll show you on one of my own personal journals the way that I like to bind so there we go so that's the easy way inspired by Jelly Belly and the way that I make them for my businesses with a little bit of alterations for me because <laughs> this is yeah but I just love and I'm so grateful for her for teaching people how to make them because I just think they're lovely so there you go so thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please post them below. And I will put a link to her video too so you can see how she makes hers. And as I said, if you guys like to see how I put in my signatures and um, what kind of binding I use to make mine, um, then let me know. But I always let my customers decide if they want them sewed in or however they want them back. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe and please check out my other videos too. I'm going to be doing a lot more of how to make art journals and that kind of stuff. So thank you so much for watching. Bye.